Today at Blade HQ, we're looking at a whole bunch of neck knives. I was going backpacking and I said, this would be a good knife, kind of a good camp knife. Yeah, and this um, is classic. Like, yeah, yeah. This, this is one that you guys suggested as a great neck knife. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, we're looking at a whole bunch of neck knives. Now, before we started this episode, I'd never regularly carried a neck knife. What about you, Zach? And I've never carried a neck knife ever. We are gonna go pick out a couple neck knives. And I'm gonna wear it for the next couple weeks and see how I like it. Because uh, you guys seem to like them, I've seen your comments. And so we're gonna see if I like them. There we go. The Kaiser Thumper short. Kind of a broad blade, I don't know if I need a, there we go. Okay. I kind of like that. So I think I'm kind of up against like super skinny. So this is kind of sit there between my massive pectorals. Should we go get Zach's opinion? Let's ambush him. He doesn't know this is coming. You and I had talked a little bit about neck knives. We have talked about neck knives. There's a neck knife. There's a neck okay. knife. What I want to know is uh, which one should I carry backpacking with me this weekend? I'm going this way right now. Yeah. Oh no, I've had my eye on this one actually. Have you? Yeah, I've had my eye on this one. This is my first time pulling it out of the packaging. Zach, you like this one? I like that one, yeah. That's, so that's here's what, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm a ceremoniously put this on. Perfect. Right here. I like it. Without stabbing my face. Zach, I've got this paracord for okay, you. And, uh, no, head? this is oh. like knighting oh. you. So, oh, okay, so Zach, okay, I, okay. I give you this. Um... <laughs> yeah, so is this how you neck knife? <laughs> yeah, this is how you, no. This is how you neck knife. <laughs> like, see, the thing is, is like, you know, you're just like sitting here wearing, you're like, oh, I gotta get like the knife real quick. <laughs> and you're you're done, it. you're there. You just gotta be careful putting it back. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing, you don't wanna start, you know. <laughs> you don't wanna Van Gogh it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's called Van Gogh carry. <laughs> the Van Gogh carry. All right, Zach. So we're gonna dive into some of the knives that we carried, some of the knives that we think would make great neck knives, as well as some of the knives that you guys recommended that would be great neck knives. So we're gonna dive right into it. I carried the Condor Bushnecker. Before we jump into that though, we've got a giveaway. Ooh, at the end of this video. At the end of this video, make sure to watch because we got a giveaway winner for uh, our, our Best Knives 2017. Absolutely. So yeah, but onto the Condor. Onto the Condor. <laughs> Forward. So the Condor Bushnecker, I picked this one. It, it's pretty lightweight, 1.6 ounces. It's, uh, what's the steel type on this one, Zach? Uh, steel type 1075. on that, 1075, yep. T 1075 steel, made in El Salvador. I was going backpacking and I said, this would be a good knife, kind of a good camp knife. So I threw it on, went backpacking in two degree weather, uh, froze all night, it was fun. Um, and I didn't pull the knife out once. Yeah. When you said so, that you were gonna go backpacking that night, I was like, no, that's not a that's not a fun time for anybody. <laughs> it was actually really fun, but it was cold. Right, but it was, cold. it was cold, yeah. So I can understand, you probably had a ton of layers on, yep. backpack straps in the road. Yep. And that was the thing, is I realized, you know, it, when I need a knife, I go straight for my pocket. That's kind of my training, that's, that's how I use it, but I did like the security of knowing I do have an extra knife with me. I like the sheath, I like the ball chain, and with backpacking I hardly even noticed it. Like right. when you got 40 pounds on your back, another 1.6 ounces is no big deal. Um, but I got back and I'm like, I gotta find something lighter. So I set this one aside for a minute and I went after the Spyderco Arc, the ARK. And uh, the thing I like about this one, 0.8 ounces, it's got H1 steel, it's polymer handle, ultra lightweight. I went for that lightweight factor. And so I snagged this guy and uh, tried him out for a couple days. And in fact, one of you recommended running with neck knives. So I'm like, all right, I'm going running. All right, guys, we're going with, on a run here, carrying the Spyderco Arc right there. Somebody says running with a knife is all right, so we're just gonna do it. So my one qualm here is this thing bounces, bounces like crazy. So it works. It's just a little obnoxious. There you go, three miles with it. Can't say I loved it. How'd that work out for you? It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the deal. So I live in a suburban area. Um, chances of meeting bearded, hatted thugs along the way. <laughs> slim to none. I live, I live a couple towns down. Yeah, <laughs> slim to none, right? So as far as needing a knife on a run, no, not at all. And it sits there and it kind of jangles 
the whole time. Even under my shirt, it sits there and jangles. Now that said, if you were running in a sketchy area, um, it might be a good feel safe sort of tool. The other thing I like about this Spyderco is it's got this dual attachment sheath. Um, basically you have to push that button right there to get the knife out. One thing I didn't like about the Bushnecker, I have a tendency to fold my arms. Right. And then if I were to put my head back, there's right. a possibility that this thing could potentially come out. For Warner's sure. It has back. really good engagement, but I can see how this feels like it's got a little bit more security. A little more it, security. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Also, H1 steel, wear it in the shower. And that, from what I've heard, rule number nine right. from our viewer, uh, Franklini Whaley, rule number nine is always carry a knife. Always carry a knife. Even if you're nude. Yeah. So. <laughs> I still think we should have modeled them, but we, you know, it's fine. Next time. <laughs> Next time. We declined. <laughs> We declined. We declined. <laughs> so those are the ones I carried. What did you carry, Zach? All right, so I went with the Kaiser Thumper, and uh, I really, I actually really liked it. So we carried these for two to three weeks-ish. You did. I, I carried yeah. mine about three or four days. Yeah, three or four said, days. All right, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I threw mine on when, when we got them, and I said, I'm going to give this a give this a go around because I've always been interested. Yeah. I've just never done it. Totally. Um, so uh, it has S35VN steel. High-end steel. Yeah, really high-end steel for like 82, 83 bucks, something like that. It's really nice. Uh, it's got the natural G10 handle, which I really like natural G10, so this yep. was cool. It was just kind of a cool knife to carry. Um, what I found personally was I didn't use it that much. Um, kind of the same thing, my training just puts me right to my pocket, and I've yep. always got my pocket knife on me. Totally. Um, my grandpa used to always say, you got a pocket, don't you? And that you have to have yep. your knife. Um, but I did, uh, the one thing that I did like about it, and it's something that I've heard you say is, uh, one is none, two is... Two, two is one, two one is, is one, none. none is one, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so that was something that I liked. It was almost like a concealed carry, um, not necessarily protection-wise, just use-wise. Sure. It was just nice to know I have the knife. Like, yeah. if I forget my pocket knife, or I went and did some jeeping and some other things, and it was just cool to know, like, the knife's there. Right. And I like Ma that. Man, yeah. this one? For sure. So the, the thing about this one, I, I like the size on it. I like that it's a higher-end steel. Um, it's a little bit slippery. And that was something that I thought about. I just never got around to it, but I considered putting some jimping in here. A little because, mod, little mod yeah, that it. is the thing with this knife is it's a it's a little small in my hand and a little slippery, so it's not a, a you know really secure great purchase. I actually sure. I actually went out in the bush too uh, for a couple of days, different time. It was much warmer. And, uh, I hate you. It, it was still snow, <laughs> but it was much warmer. Uh, built a little lean to. I was out there for a couple of days, and I use it a little bit here and there just for kindling and stuff like that, trying to get some use out of it to understand yeah. it. And uh, it, I mean, it performed well. I never cut myself, but it was something I was definitely conscious of. Totally. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with this one. Like, so next one on the list, CRKT Minimalist. Yeah, and this um, is a classic. Like, yeah, yeah, this this is one that you guys suggested as a great neck knife. Um, Micarta handle scales. You've got a couple different varieties in this one, and I I usually like a neutral handle, kind of like this, where it doesn't force your hand into a spot. But these minimalists, especially with a small knife, I actually really like the finger choils. Yeah, the choils and the jimping on top. Yep, it's and a, the, the jimping. The there. minimalist is such a secure knife. I had a buddy. He didn't. Uh, he didn't carry it as a neck knife, but I had a buddy who would carry it, scout carry it. Okay. And that was the only knife he carried, and he loved the choil for that very reason, yep. just because it was a smaller knife. Yep. And this one, yeah, I, even the uh, the lanyard on that one, just a little bit more purchase in hand, and uh, this one just feels a lot more secure to me than that guy, yeah. personally. Yeah, but I will say, I actually did I did like the Kaiser Thumper. Did you? I, nice. I think it's it's a nice looking knife, which aesthetics is something I look for in my sure. knife. I know it's kind of silly, but sure. eh, no, you know. it's, it's important. It's important, I think. And uh, and I and I, using it was great. Like it nice. held an edge and it was, it was a good knife. Nice. So I enjoyed it. Guys, we're gonna look at a few more knives here in just a second, right after the commercial break. Hey guys, we've got some exciting news. Um, Benchmade just came out with another round of some discontinued knives. It was kind of a surprise to us, and so now they're on the website. So things like this triage, or even like this 530 part view, are all part of the discontinued Benchmade sale. Uh, one thing that I will say though, is that there are not a lot of them and they are going fast. So go to bladehq.com, look for the Benchmade discontinued sale, and uh, hurry, because like I said, they're flying off the shelf. And we're back from commercial break. Now, the next one on the list is more of your self-defense knife. I feel like all the ones we've kind of looked at could yeah. potentially be self-defense knives, but I don't know that they're inherently, maybe the arc a little bit. The next one, totally self-defense Pure, pure self-defense, yeah. It's the Cold Steel Urban Pal. Uh, blade length on this thing is one and a half inches. One and a half inches, total length's about three inches-ish. You got a polymer handle, uh, partially serrated blade. And basically, this is a last ditch, save your bacon sort of tool. I mean, you could use it as a regular cutting tool, um, yeah, kind of choke I, up on it. Yeah, I don't think it, it's, it's, it's self-defense. It's a self-defense push yeah, dagger. Yeah. And it's tiny. Uh, weight on this thing is 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7 ounces, so it's right in that range that I like. So if you're looking for lightweight between the two here, um, I'd look at either of these, um, just depending on use. If I were looking for more of a utility 
yeah. knife, I'd go for, for sure. that arc. Yep. The Spyderco arc versus the Cold Steel Urban Pal. But uh, if you're looking for just purely save your bacon in an emergency, that Urban Pal is a good good choice. Yeah, it is, and it's got the uh, the the Secure X sheath mm -hmm. on it, and so it actually locks in really it well. Does. Like I was I was a little skeptical because the other way that uh, people use this knife is you'll you see the key ring here. Sure. Is they'll put it to their keys or on the back of a backpack or something, yeah. and I was like, I don't know about that. But I was kind of shaking it yeah. around and no, trying to, get, and it, it will not come out. So it won't. yeah. Yeah. Impressive little knife. And it is. The nice thing about neck knives, and you guys mentioned this in the comments, is they're fairly affordable. Um, the the most expensive one we've got on the table is 80 bucks, 25. Uh, I don't know what the arc is. Yeah, I don't remember what the arc was the going for. Cold steel is 20 bucks. So overall, you're paying for less material. 68-ish on 68. the arc. 68. So yeah. you're gonna pay a little bit more for that H1 steel, but it's not gonna rust on you. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, I do like that Urban Pal. Yeah. It's kind of a cool one. It's a great knife. And the Urban Pal is like 20 bucks or something yep. like that. Yeah, so yep. yeah, really nice. Uh, so next up we've got the SE uh, Azula. Yep, so, recommended by you guys, by the way. Yeah, no, this is another one. Uh, I think this one kind of falls in line with the with the Minimalist. Yeah. Uh, kind of a classic Yeah, a uh, lot of folks knife. recommended yeah. this one. Yeah, so uh, the blade length's right around three inches. It's about six inches total length. Um, and obviously there's no no handle material. Yeah. Um, the cool thing with this and with its little brother that we'll talk about here in a minute, is that you can get a micarta scale kit for it, yep. and you can get a G10 scale kit for it. And with this one specifically, I, you could probably do it with both. But with this one specifically, you can also do a paracord wrap. Nice, which is pretty cool. So I 1. think it's 9 really ounces. great. Yeah. So it is on the table. As far as those on the table, it is on the heavy side. Um, I like the Azula. I've never neck knife carried it. I think it'd be a little heavy for my personal taste. But its little brother, I think, is a is a mighty fine addition to the family. The Candy yeah, we'll Roo. Get a size comparison on those two. Yep. Check that out. Yeah. Purple as well. Yeah. The Candy Roo <laughs> is a little bit smaller in the blade length, a little bit lighter, um, just designed to be more of a, a true neck knife, where I think a lot of people carry the Azula because they own it already. Right. And it's like, oh, let's neck knife carry this. I think this is more designed as a true... More specific neck yep. knife. And again, with this, you've got good purchase here. you got a little bit of jimping on yep. top. So again, really nice secure grip on that. Skeletonized handle if you want to throw a paracord wrap on it. Yeah. Um, and the fish... The candy root itself. Go look it up because it's a fun story. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, and I actually the Zula is actually also named. It's named after the bullet ants, which I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. But apparently, it's like the most painful, like toxin poison. I don't know the difference, nice. but it's the most painful bite sting you can get on Gnarly. Earth. So yeah, pretty Gnarly. crazy. <laughs> Next knife on the list is the Banana Ramic Banana Ramic Banana Ramic K Bar TDI. Now, this is a great little knife if you're looking for a last ditch tool. Again, yeah, definitely a last ditch tool. I mean, I think the difference between this and the cold steel is you could get some use out of this. I mean, there's a little bit of purchase to it. It's got the jumping on top. You could open some boxes and stuff, but I think it's designed very specifically for self-defense. I agree. The sheath on this thing, I like this too. It's just a tiny sheath. So one thing I noticed is some of these sheaths are a little bit bigger. Um, the arc, once you get all the all yeah. the pieces on there, feels a little bigger. Well, and even so, the Azula, it's just, you know, it's a little bit fatter, yep. you know? Yep, not a big footprint on this thing. Yeah, and this so. is actually another thing that a lot of you guys said with carrying neck knife was concealability. Sure. Um, so this is a great, great concealed Absolutely. Knife, for sure. K-Bar TDI, and that one runs about 14 bucks, so currently. And now let's let's be honest with each other, these prices are subject to change. If you're watching yeah. this in the year 2020, perhaps, yeah. the price might be different. So for sure. <laughs> definitely check it on the website at yieldbladeshq.com. Now we've got one more. We're gonna hold it for just a second yeah. to hit the mailbag. Um, first on the mailbag, <laughs> worst insult we've ever had. Is it? Oh, I'll, let, I'll give you the Patrick honor. Henry, he says, short insert eclipse and over the top delivery of the dude on the left. Make this upload cringeworthy. Words <laughs> hurt, don't be a part of it. Decent content though, just tone it down. Not sure who you're trying to appeal to. Smart man, Patrick. We don't know who we're appealing to either, but we love you guys. <laughs> uh, next one on the list, we had a young man in here named Josh the other day in the storefront, and he actually left us a note on a video. He was carrying a little squid, 
And uh, so I shot a text over to Lucas Burnley. Josh left the store before Lucas Burnley responded. So here's your response from Lucas Burnley, Josh. Thanks for stopping by the storefront. Open from noon to six, Tuesday through Saturday. Yeah. So if you're ever in Lehigh, Utah. And also, can we just talk just for five seconds how cool Ben is that he just shoots a text to Lucas Burnley. So that's, that's exactly. the thing. <laughs> when I told Josh, hey, I'll just shoot him a text. Yeah. Josh is like, you have Lucas's number? <laughs> Appropriate like, response, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> but he does. When you kick around this industry long enough, yeah. like. Mm. <laughs> it's good. There's the mailbag. Okay, last knife on the list. This is an interesting one, guys. Um, I actually would never neck knife carry this thing. No, I wouldn't it's either. It's too heavy. It's For me, it's more about the length. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. 2.7 ounces. This is the Kershaw Skyline. It's the S30V steel with the carbon fiber handle. Blade length on this thing is three and a quarter inches. Yeah. It's a big one. But the thing is, guys, neck knife carry this thing. In fact, our graphic designer Josh neck knife carry neck knife carries it. I snagged some footage of him walking around the office like a boss. So, so I tried a neck knife, not my favorite, not quite my tempo. But you've been rocking this all day long. What's the deal, man? I just love it. It's perfect. It's lightweight. Can't even tell if you want to be low key about it. Just a little boom, man. There's your knife. You like that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I feel secure. He Same. loves he loves it. He loves it. All right. And I love it as well. <laughs> <laughs> he actually walked into a convenience store to pick up some brewskis the other day, and uh, I think he he might have looked like an undercover cop. Yeah. So people so, were like, Yeah. So yes, sir. <laughs> so he's, this is the story. Is he's in, he's in a rough part of town, I guess. Yeah. And he dro dropped in to get some drinks, and he goes in, and he said people were kind of looking at him weird, and he realized he's wearing kind of all black and a, and a black baseball cap. And he had, he didn't realize he still had the skyline around his neck on the outside of his clothes, because around the office he does, but I think when he leaves he tucks it in. Yeah. And so, yeah, everybody was kind of, uh, kind of staying out of his way, and I guess as he walks out, there's kind of a rough looking dude with some like face tats or something, and he just holds the door for him, he's like, have a good day. <laughs> and Josh is like, what? And then he realized, oh, it's this, it's probably this neck knife and the way I'm dressed. So. Totally. <laughs> this is a great knife. Um, in my mind, this is too big, too bulky to neck knife carry it. Yeah, great knife. Compare I mean, it to the Bushnecker. Yeah. Right there. Just your, your overall length is a little long. Um, that said, I mean, Josh does it. Yeah. If Josh does it, it's, Gotta be right, yeah, right? Yeah, guys do it, and I think that's great. But yeah, for me personally, just it's too long for a neck knife. Yep. Uh, that's that's another reason I really like that thumper was it just was compact. Tiny. Yeah. Tiny. I like it. Okay, guys. A few weeks ago, we had a giveaway in Knife Banter in the Seven Best Knives, and uh, we're giving away an injection. Now we said, all right, it's a ten dollar knife. Let's give away three. We'll be generous. <laughs> for fun. So the winners of the injection Kershaw injection giveaway are Mike. Spielman, yeah, Emerald Raccoon, and Vincent Vin, Vincente Lopez, el ganador del mundo. Vincente Lopez, el ganador del mundo. There it is. Over the top delivery, anybody? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, you like that? Okay, good. <laughs> good. There it is, guys. In a few weeks, we're going to be doing a video on OTFs. So let us know down in the comments what your favorite OTFs are and why. We'd love to use some of your comments in the next knife banter we do. And uh, we'll have another video coming out for you next week. And what the, what is that one going to be, Zach? Yes. Oh man, I've been so, so stoked to see this, Zach. Is that the? That's the thing. The thing? Yeah. It's yeah. Zach's it's... shop, my Carta handles, yeah. Spider Co Shaman. You're gonna love it. It's like an entire video. Yeah with this bearded man. Well, I don't know about all that goodness, but it is pretty, the scales <laughs> turned out pretty cool, I think. So that part I'm excited they're, about. They're super cool. So we'll have that for you next week. Thanks for watching, guys. That would be an expensive wall. What, to do an actual brick? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, if you outsourced it. I can lay brick and mortar, no problem. Well, I knew you could, but yeah. aren't bricks expensive? No, uh, it depends on what you go with. Hmm.